Hi, my name is Dr. Terry McCatton from West County Plastic Surgeons, Washington University, and the Seitman Cancer Center in St. Louis. Today, I'm going to be giving you a little bit of information about the DIEP flap. So DIEP is an acronym standing for Deep Inferior Epigastric Artery Perforator Flap. So this is the name of a specific blood vessel that feeds the lower part of the abdomen. In fact, the deep flap is a more refined version of the original procedure that a lot of people have heard of called the tram flap, which stands for transverse rectus abdominis myocutaneous flap. So what both of these flaps look like on a patient who's had a mastectomy or removal of the breast uh, for cancer is as follows. So on this patient, one breast has been removed. Here is the other healthy breast. And here is the patient's torso. Here's the belly button. And then this here is the pubic area here. Now in both of these operations, skin and fat in the following configuration are removed from the patient. Now in the original description, the tram flap procedure, what happened was this tissue was transferred to the breast. And the way that that happened was that underneath the skin and the fat on the abdominal wall, is a muscle called the rectus abdominis muscle, which is basically your six-pack muscle. And so RA stands for the rectus abdominis muscle. And what would happen is in the pedicle flap, this skin and fat would be transferred to the absent breast area by getting blood flow through this muscle. So this whole unit of tissue would be flipped up into the chest. But in doing so, that would take away your rectus abdominis muscle, at least on one side. And certainly if both breasts were going to be reconstructed, both muscles would need to be taken. And that could lead to reduced function and some increase in pain. Fortunately, the advent of microsurgery, meaning that blood vessels are sewn together under the microscope, came about. And then after that time, what was called the free tram flap was designed. And in that case, what would happen is the same amount of tissue would be taken, but in this case, rather than using all of the muscle, only a small portion of the muscle would need to be taken. And the way that this would survive in the chest is that the artery and veins, so the blood vessels that were feeding this muscle and the skin and the fat would be transferred up into the chest, and then these blood vessels would be reattached to blood vessels here in the chest under the operating microscope. Now in the final iteration, or the DIEP flap, this represented an even greater improvement because in this case what would happen is we would essentially take just the skin and the fat and no muscle whatsoever. So obviously, in this case, you're not missing any muscle, so there's less pain, an improvement in function compared to the other operations, and this unit of tissue would be transferred to reconstruct the breast. And again, you could use half for one side, half for the other to reconstruct both breasts. These are relatively long operations, taking somewhere between four and seven to eight hours to perform. Um, but this is a clear advancement over some of these other tram flap operations for breast reconstruction.